Hey everyone, welcome back to The Collision. It's me again, Daniel Blackaby, and I'm here for the first time on The Collision desk. I got Monty with me, uh, and we're here uh, to talk about Star Wars. Yeah. Star Wars on TV, uh, so let's get into it. For years, we were, me and my brother would be kind of geeking, talking about, and kind of thinking, what, what, would a, kind of, what would a live action show be like? And now we know. Now we got. This is the first. You know, there's gonna be there's gonna be more of these coming. Uh, but the Mandalorian, the first kind of taste of of Star Wars on TV. Uh, so what what do you say? Um, and to, I guess to be clear up front, uh, this we're gonna be kind of talking about the or the episode, kind of breaking it down. Uh, this is more of a recap than a than a review. Uh, you know, we're gonna be talking about spoilers, getting right into the details. So if you haven't seen it. Um, then what are you doing? Uh, but if you haven't seen it, then go watch it, uh, you know, and then come back and, and, and talk about it with us because we're excited to break this down. But why don't we do, why don't we start? Or we can get into some of the some of the more specifics in a second. But just general impressions. The show came out yesterday. <clears throat> What's your your general take on it? Um, in general, I liked it. Um, I wouldn't say I loved it, but I liked it. Um, it was it felt it felt quick, but uh, tone wise, I did really enjoy it. It felt like a western. Um, yeah, and they really, they really lean into like the Western aspect of. Yeah, I mean, like the first first scenes of bar fight. The ending scene is a, you know, a shootout in a town square kind of thing. Um, and you have a bounty hunter, which is a very kind of Western idea. It even looks like the planet at the end looks like a Western. And planet. even and the music really kind of, you know, it's a straight up space Western kind of music and vibe. Yeah. And and I've always felt like Star Wars balances. Yeah. You know, on the one hand, sort of like a space fantasy. You got the Luke Skywalker, the knights, the princess, the magic. Yeah. And the other side is kind of the Han Solo, you know, this the gritty, the, you know, the saloon, you know, bar fights yeah. and kind of quick draws. And this show to me felt almost like what Star Wars would have been had Han Solo been the main character. Yeah. And he came across Luke kind of as a, as a side character. Yeah. Where there's hints of sort of that, there is, you know, the force and the supernatural fantasy elements are still there but they're definitely on the fringe and it's yeah. it leans way more into that kind of gritty you know the opening the opening scene is fantastic the yeah. this the way they introduce set the tone it, it to me it was very reminiscent of like the intro to Han Solo where it's yeah the cantina you, yeah within within about 2 minutes you get a pretty clear sense to who the Mandalorian is he's sure. you know he's he's a no nonsense kind of guy you know he's he's straight up Cuts the poor, the poor alien in half with yeah. the, with the door. But just sort of setting the tone right off the bat, you you kind of get us. This is the kind of show that this is going to be. It's, it's it's going to be kind of a more gritty, yeah. um, and we can kind of get into in a second some of you know, what that means as far as on a thematic level. But what it, maybe some more general thoughts. This is the, about um, the show. yeah. But I mean, yeah. I just I, I liked it. I think that um, it, it'll be interesting to see where the character goes. Uh, the the part where they talk about how he never shows his face, I'm wondering if we're ever going to see his face. I bet we. Uh, we but we I see bet the him as a, ends that way. But we see him as a child, or what we what we believe is a flashback to him as a as a kid. Um, what looks like kind of Clone Wars era. So you see, you know, you see his his face there. Um, but then also like and then at the end, like the the two the true characters are faceless, and I think that's really interesting that like. Um, uh, you know, it was a pretty interesting show, and it, uh, it carried my attention, even though like I couldn't see anybody. I yeah, didn't and know that's kind of the. Um, and I'd be curious too if you've seen the show. Let us know. But the kind of one of my worries, kind of going in, is you know, there's there's only so much of just the kind of the awesome, cool factor, space, you know, laser fights, and yeah. kind of that Star Wars kind of spectacle. You know that's you know that's awesome. And you, and you, you got, Star Wars show or movie has to have that, yeah. but Star Wars to me is also being, you know, it has that kind of emotional core to yeah. it, and that was kind of my, how, you know, what do you think as far as going ahead? You know, you don't see his face. You know, yeah. He really he says what maybe, ten words in the he doesn't say in the a first whole lot. half of the episode. Yeah. Doesn't say a whole lot. You know, I think we're gonna get more and more of his character, yeah. and I, I do think. But I feel like we do sort of know who he is. You know, he he's he has a reputation for being great at what he does, um, and even the kind of like I feel like he's more well-rounded 
he wasn't just sort of a, a tough bounty hunter, you know, killing people. It's no moral compass. You know, it, there's the scene where he's he's kind of making the armor and it, he's kind of giving the excess to to the kids, supporting kind of his clan, the yeah. Mandalorian, you know, the clan that's kind of the remnant. That, that was interesting that there's a, finally a character in Star Wars that has armor that actually does something. Because like like stormtroopers have armor, it's aesthetic. Boba Fett had armor. Darth Vader has armor. Doesn't do anything. Like they still get shot. They're still they're still not in good yeah in, it, in good shape. But he has armor. It actually works. It deflects things. So and I love cool. I love the idea that he's gonna add in to his armor. Yeah, too, it sounds like he's he, hopefully he if he succeeds in his bounty, he'll get more of this metal and create a whole new suit, which should be a which yeah, should be sort of, of like looking. he's like it's almost like he's like. Internally, kind of growing into this persona as the Mandalorian, yeah. kind of embracing his roots, but then on like an external level, it's also he's kind of you know his armor is adding more to it. You know, later, you know, even from the trailer of the season, you see he keeps adding to it, kind of looking pretty awesome. But yeah. uh, what maybe you know maybe a negative that you know this. Um, like I said, it would mean it was it was quick. Um, I wish it had a long time ago in Galaxy Far Far Away. That seemed like a super easy thing. They, yeah, they, they should have had it at the first? beginning. They it, had that little Star Wars logo yeah, thing, which was which is fine. Awesome. I, I didn't really care that much about it, but like it would have been super easy. You don't need to crawl. Just just tell me it's a galaxy far, far away. Because you know, they even had that in front of Solo and Rogue One. That's just a a nerdy nitpick. Yeah, but, and it, uh, well, I'd be curious too if you uh, you know if you've seen the show, uh, did it feel like Star Wars to you? Because that's that's kind of my yeah. gauge. I'm I'm pretty open minded with. With Star Wars, I don't love every Star Wars thing that comes out, but th- the main thing it has to do for me is sort of that emotional. F- it just has to feel. Well, I think it, like I think Star it really Wars. felt like it, it really had the the tone. It, it's more the tone that I would have wanted from the Solo movie. I think like that sort of gritty underworld of it. Um, I didn't love the music. That was one of my. But but it could grow on me. Maybe there'll be some themes introduced, and and you can't you can't just. You know, manufacture John Williams music for a TV yeah, show. Yeah, and, you know, so. and, and I don't even, you know, I don't know if the kind of the main force <laughs> theme, if that starts blurring out in the middle yeah. of a gun, I don't know if it would work. Sure. But I know it. It took me a little bit to get into this. The okay, this is a different. I did. I my my con, which maybe they'll fix, is that I loved IG Eleven. He like when he when he appeared, the droid. I He's... thought he was great and really awesome and funny. And droids are usually some of the best Star Wars yeah, humor. Yeah, K2, you got the original And, like, OGs. I loved him for five minutes, and he shot him in the head. And, uh, I, and I think he, I think I've seen he is he is coming back. Cause well, Taiki hopefully, Rattiti, because I was so, I was so, like, Well, in that dynamic, excited. the two of them, it was sort of like a, what's it, you know, Butch Cassidy. And it's sure. sort of that, that vibe, these two kind of, you know, cowboy westerns out there yeah. doing heists, outnumbered, kind of well, getting I mean, people it's, down. It's, it's Han and Chewie. It's probably what they're gonna do with the 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 Cassian and or um, K two S O series. You just have those two, you know, sidekicks. Yeah. So, so I hope they. I think he's coming. I think he's coming back. Hopefully. But I hope I hope they lean into that. I know there's other characters that are gonna be coming in. Yeah, you have um, um, Gina Carano's character. We haven't seen her. And even though, Zito, who's supposed to be the villain, haven't seen him. The the kind of the Ugnot, you know, I have spoken. That was is, funny. You know, I hope he comes back because he <laughs> he is fantastic. And you know, if you if you've seen it, the show, you're going to be saying, "I have spoken." I have spoken. And uh, it was cool that, that that he and the and the alien at the beginning, you know, they were they were real. They were just makeup. You know, it felt the, the, there was good practical effects. You know, so it felt like Star Wars. It wasn't as ambitious as a movie where you have giant scenes. They were much smaller that contained scenes, but they looked real. They didn't look over CGI'd. Yeah, it felt like they just filmed it at like the yeah the Universal theme park. This is a real place. So one of the things we need to get into is just as far as like the themes. Again, this is it's one episode, so it's yeah. hard to it's hard to kind of tell what they're gonna do with it in the full. You know, when you can look back over the full show, this you know, the the topic of this and kind of the more the underground, kind of the underworld, the CD part. It, it it's getting away a bit, and Han Solo did or tried to do it, uh, mm-hmm. the Han Solo movie, uh, Solo: A Star Wars Story. Sorry, um, but it, you know, one of the staples of Star Wars is kind of the the light side, the dark side, the yeah. rebels, the Imperials, the you know, the Luke Skywalker who's this sort of this good farm boy against the <clears throat> evil, you know, black armored Darth mm-hmm. Vader. This show 
steers away from that and kind of gets into the more of that that yeah. kind of morally ambiguous. What do you think of that in a Star Wars story? Is that I think well, I'm I'm excited. I don't know how it's going to turn out. I think it's very interesting because if you have a you know you got a bounty hunter um who's you know th he's hunting for criminals supposedly but then like who's paying him to do it and then, like the empire is kind of not around but they are still around and so he's working for an imperial so like are is the people he's hunting really bad do they really deserve to be caught is he just doing things for a paycheck um so i i i and the, if you go with the western vibe i mean that's that's kind of the, the character he is, you see him as a bit of a Clint Eastwood character. If you ever watch, like, you know, like, um, The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly, you know, he starts as a character who's very just in for the money, hunting people down, bounty hunter. But eventually he, like, he'll sort of develop a moral compass, and that's sort of what I expect with him. He might become more selfless as time goes yeah, on. Yeah, in this first episode, we see this with, with, Baby Yoda ish. Creature. Yeah, because you kind of, you know, if you kind of bookend the in this the pilot episode, within two minutes he's he's gunning guys down just yeah. to get a bounty. Yeah. You know, just to get the guy on a ship to get more money. So you kind of see that callous kind of no morals, but then later with the with the armor where he's kind of giving the the leftover of it to provide for the children yeah. with the baby Yoda uh, creature. Uh, you can see some empathy there. He's not just going to gun down this this child, this, this kind of orphaned child. So I think, and I think sometimes as Christians, we think, you know, if we if we get away from the black white, light side dark side, that it's, you know, that it's we're kind of entering into dangerous territory. Mm -hmm. But I, I find that the the possibilities are actually way more yeah. intriguing from that perspective. That it's it's not doing away with morality or that conflict. It's it's kind of more rather than this cosmic conflict it's mm -hmm. kind of in this you know within his own heart he's dealing with you know who, what just, does he stand for what's right what's wrong kind of what who just, makes the law when can the law of the land is has crumbled the yeah. empires out and so there's the, there, there's a lot of ambiguity it's going to be interesting to see him go through all that and, yeah, and obviously, what, what is this little creature by the way i looked it up there is no like species name for Yoda. And I I hope uh, and we can end this uh, recap with kind of this maybe this forecast and what we what we think might happen. One of my thing I hope they don't give it the Yoda the Yoda baby the species a name. Like I I love that that's sort of one of those lingering Star Wars mysteries that we just we never know uh you know I I'm intrigued by the fact that this is this Yoda baby at the end. <laughs> Uh, although I'm fifty year old, Yoda yeah, baby. which you know, which <laughs> it's a little weird. Me and my wife were debating what that means for Yoda. You know, I was trying to do the math of you know, how old is Yoda then? It's with, Yoda like a teenager. Yeah, uh, they die. <laughs> they die young. But, but, but some of that. There's always. I hope they don't over explain, and that's sometimes an issue with some of the other Star Wars properties, sure. even Solo, uh, Star Wars story. I, I like the mystery not explained. I hope they don't get too deep into it. But what? Maybe what's one thing kind of going forward? I think there's seven more episodes, yeah. a lot of story to tell. You know, this is really just a taste of really just introducing this is the character, this is the tone, buckle up. You know, the story's going to unfold in the coming episodes. But what what do you think's going to happen? What would you, anywhere you want it to go? Uh, any? any I, I, I don't know because I'm not sure what they're throwing in here. Is there going to be some force reference with this? You know, because the, the baby's supposed to be 50 years old. Does that mean, you know, that that's about, like, episode one time. Like, where did this thing come from? Yeah, um, it'd be interesting. There, you know, there's there's a, the, the, there is a female Yoda. Like, yeah, from her, the... Is it, is it her name is was it, Yaddle. Yaddle. Who is, like, in the background in episode one. So, nerd. Yeah, well, nerd and if you're deep. watching, maybe give us your... Uh, <laughs> give us a name for the baby Yoda that starts with a Y. <laughs> maybe that's just sort of its species thing. But yeah, that's the thing I'm going to be looking forward to the most. Again, I don't have. I was super hyped about this show, and I, I I loved it. I enjoyed it, but I didn't necessarily have a bunch of like boxes it needed to check. I didn't yeah. have a. I haven't really thought ahead of you know what's going to happen. It, overall, again, I watched it. I ended up watching this episode twice. Yeah. I watched it once with my wife, and I you know I was so hyped up that I after that uh, I I watched it again, kind of calmed down just taking it in and I actually enjoy, I enjoyed it the first time but I really enjoyed it the second time yeah I did too um, just sort of once you kind of have all the expectations out of the way of a new Star Wars is happening 
I think on its own, maybe it, it didn't blow me away that this this one episode isn't one that I think you want to you know watch again and again. But yeah. I think what it set up is is intriguing to me. I'm I'm, I'm curious. I'm I'm eager for uh for the next episode and. But uh, you, if you, if you guys saw this, if you guys saw the show, let us know what you what you thought. What you did it satisfy? Did it did it meet your expectations? Uh, I don't you know. Some of you are probably mega Star Wars fans. Some of you are more like my wife that she knows the characters, knows the story, but she's not you know laying awake at night thinking of fan <laughs> theories or you know counting down the days till Rise of Skywalker. So so let us. We'd love to hear your your thoughts on the episode. Where you think this this show might be going. Um, anything like that. And again, if you if you haven't done so already, we'd love for you to subscribe to our channel. Uh, just hit that subscribe button, like this video, and just join us. We're going to be doing uh, recaps of each of the episodes of this show. So, so we hope you'll join us and, and geek out, talk some Star Wars in the comment section. But uh, I know both me and Monty want to just thank you for watching. Hope that you'll continue to collide with your world for Christ.